We're going to cover the Sun and Moon base set ETB reprints, how that's going to affect the markets, what you need to do to prepare. Let's get started. Hello, beautiful people. Captain Zach Sparrow here. That's right. You read that right? You heard that right? Sun and Moon base set ETBs are being reprinted? It's been confirmed by multiple legitimate sources on Twitter, albeit Twitter, but reputable sources like local game stores across the country are showing screenshots of them showing, hey, this is what I got from my distributor. X amount of boxes potentially for pre-order. How much do you guys want so we know what number to send them? So let's assume for a second that that's right. Sun and Moon came out in February of 2017. That's been over four years at this point, so don't think for a second that the modern sets that you're investing in are safe from a reprint. Pokemon plays by their own rules, not by your rules. <laughs> However, don't panic. If you have a bunch of Sun and Moon base set ETBs or you just bought some and you were holding them, looking to flip them, whatever the case, number one, do not panic. Even when everyone else is panicking, don't panic panic in a bull market or a bear market. The reason being, that's a great way to lose money. You are not thinking rationally at that point. You are totally thinking with your emotions. Here's why. You are afraid that you're going to lose money. Well, I might as well lock in some profit now or be able to recoup some of my costs. If I can get 70% back on that money, that's a lot better than that. Don't do that. There's a reason that the ETB boxes that these specific ones climb to that certain price they're going to get there again. And personally, I have reason to believe that they would go past that by a long shot. So number one, stay calm. If you have sets, if you have a lot in base set, here's another cool tip as well. How many people do you think are going to collect every single set in Pokemon? Pretty unlikely, right? It's gonna get really expensive, really quick. And it's just too varied at this point. So you're gonna need to kind of pick pick what whatever you want from certain sets or, or you might skip some sets, whatever it might be. Do you think it would be easier for a collector to say, ah, you know what, I kind of want a little bit of everything, but I can't afford everything or it's just not practical to have everything? Maybe I'll just go with the base set of everything. Base set Sword and Shield. Base set Sun and Moon. You see what I'm saying? So that's something to keep in mind for sure moving forward. Uh, the base set, I personally really like the base set stuff. Any base set, base set black and white. I think all of it's really cool, the base set stuff, even though a lot of them aren't as flashy, uh, excluding like base set, base set. Uh, a lot of them aren't as flashy, but I really like them. It's just, uh, it, it's what kicked it off, right? It's what kicked off, it's what kicked off all of those great sets, right? Out of everything we've gotten from Sword and Shield, I really, really, really like Sword and Shield, but I don't know. I really like base set Sword and Shield. I really like base set Sun and Moon. I think those are cool sets. Again, it's just kind of nostalgic in a way to say, hey, here's how this whole series got started, right? So I think it's really easy for a lot of collectors to do that. I have also personally seen collectors only collect base set stuff. So I know anecdotally, sure. Um, but the fact that some people mention that to me, let me know that other collectors are doing that. Other people are doing that. They're putting their money into something like that. I think that's really cool. I think that's an investable plan. Uh, I think that's going to do really well long term. Now, how can I get my hands on something like this? Call your local game store. Call them now. Uh, even if you're going to annoy them, just be like, hey, uh, do you guys have this in yet? Have you heard of this? There are going to be a lot that are not going to hear of it yet. There are going to be a lot of people who, who don't know what you're talking about. And there are going to be some that do. Whether you want something for your sealed collection, you just want to rip some Sun and Moon packs, uh, retail price by yourself, what, whatever it may be, I would definitely reach out. Uh, it's the, the worst thing you, you can hear is no. Um, you can't be too soon on something like this, right? You just call and they're like, ah, oh, no, I haven't heard anything like that. But if they are going to send it to us, we might hear something, you know, next Tuesday or whatever it might be. So definitely call them, see what kind of information you can get from it. I mean, you're not going to get anything if you don't try. Another thing, how is this going to affect the markets? Is it going to shake it up? It, it depends what size of the reprint it is. If, if it is true, it's looking like it is. If it is true, we have to assume that. How is it going to affect single prices? Some reprints hardly affect single prices. Most of the time they affect it though. 
how much depends on how much product we get sent back out to us. Of course, the more product we get, the more certain cards will go down. Some of the more premium cards uh, you're looking at from this set, the Umbreon, uh, there's a Secret Rare Umbreon GX, and there is a, a Lily Full Art in base set. Um, those, I think, are the two most expensive cards last time I checked. So that would be something to keep an eye on for sure. It'll be interesting to see how those cards perform. Uh, regardless, I wouldn't put any money into anything until I can see what the market is doing for a period of time after the release, the reprint release. Uh, the reason being for that would be, all right, prices are cuckoo at the beginning of launch. They can, uh, they can fall. I have seen first edition boxes outside of Pokemon, like Flesh and Blood, for example, uh, to give you some more modern examples uh, for Flesh and Blood, for example, where the price tanks right before release. And when I say tanks, it doesn't go to zero. What I mean is, is it almost gets cut in half or uh, by 20 something percent, I think it was. And then you see it spike immediately as soon as it releases again, like spiking, like for example, Shining Fates ETBs being over a hundred dollars a box on release, which makes no sense now. They're much lower than that. You can find them for $70 shipped on eBay. You have to look a little bit for it. You can easily find them for 75, 80 shipped though. Um, so just keep that in mind that prices are going to be all over the place at first. If you can grab a great deal, go ahead and grab a great, a great deal. I personally am going to wait to see What's going to happen with that volatility at the very beginning? And then what's going to happen? Something's going to level out at some point. I might end up paying a little bit more if I wait, let's say two months, just to make sure all the weirdness moves. But as soon as it starts to level and I see, okay, the craziness has finally calmed down. All of the Karens are done shopping at the moment. I'm gonna go ahead and swoop in and buy it at instead of, you know, $50 a box or whatever it's going to be. Oh, I guess I'm going to have to pay 55 or 60, 65, whatever that might be. But at least I know, hey, the, this is what the boxes are actually going to go for now. It's not going to be anything insane. Here's another pro tip as well. Generally speaking, whenever you're, uh, so Sun and Moon Base set, it does have the two different styled ETBs. Same, same thing, same, 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 but different. Uh, <laughs> they're the same thing. But the Solgaleo boxes go for a bit more than the Lunala boxes. So if you're holding the sealed product, or if you just want something for a display, you're like, hey, I want the Solgaleo and I want the Lunala box. Great, good for you. If you're doing it for a purely investment purpose, it might, might make sense to pick up only a Solgaleo box or boxes, whatever it is you're looking to do. Um, same thing with like base set Sword and Shield, the Zamazenta artwork, and then there's the Zacian. Which one do you think sells for more? It's the Zacian one. So keep those things in mind. Certain Pokemon are just more popular. That's just the way it is. Is it racist? Might be a little, not not racist, might be a little Pokemonist. But again, keep those things in mind. Certain Pokemon just do better than other Pokemon. That's just the way it is, sister. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna buy a case of these things, buddy. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm just saying the base set of every new era is important. It encapsula encapsulates almost everything that that, if you really think about it, the, the way that the sets are structured, it really captures a lot from those sets. Anything Sword and Shield based, at the very beginning, if you grab a base Sword and Shield pack, you're going to be like, hey, I experienced the Sword and Shield era. It's not every single set under the Sword and Shield umbrella, but I experienced it. That makes the most sense to me. I don't know where you would jump into a set aside from that. Looking back 15 years from now, is someone going to say, man, you know what? I really like Sword and Shield battle styles. I don't know. I, I can't answer that for you. I'll look back 15 years from now and be like, man, I was an idiot. But I have a feeling the base set stuff's going to do pretty good. Let me know what you think, though. And of course, the most important thing, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified of future videos just like this. And until next time, an ETB a day keeps the doctor away. Stop it. Stop waiting to the end of the videos, waiting for something to happen. Go watch the rest of my videos. Please. <laughs>